Oh, so one of the other um, really seminal moments for us in tracking the trend was last September when Takashi Murakami had his exhibition in the Palace of Versailles. It isn't just about the kind of ornamental and um, really kind of French and aristocratic beauty of Versailles, but it was the juxtaposition of that with a really like pop kind of street and approachable fun sensibility that was represented in, in Murakami's art. So it's interesting too to think about Takashi Murakami, I think, as really a, a flag bearer in this movement. If you think about the way that he's been able to kind of deconstruct and reinvent a lot of the Louis Vuitton status symbols with, with his um, trademark art, and then the way he's been able to infuse these other kind of um, maybe tired institutions of, of classic and idealistic beauty with a more approachable and, and fresh sensibility about, about it. Fabulous is a trend that we've been watching um, really since last year and have been excited to see develop into something that's you know, more than just emergent. Fabulous is optimistic and it's inclusive and it takes into consideration things that you have already. So whether it's things in your current wardrobe or um, things that you find on the cheap or things that you're able to reinvent um, from common kind of everyday materials, those are the things that are most fabulous. It um, really represents the shift from austerity and frugality that were kind of rep that were predominant in consumers' minds for the past couple of years with the economic recession, and um, represents the shift then from from those spaces into one that's a lot more celebratory and enthusiastic and and joyful, and um, really incorporates a sense of play that wasn't there before. You know, like the difference between bling and fabulous would be sort of that there was um, this whole you know, phase back in the Paris Hilton era of celebutantism that had a lot to do with like crystals and bling and like wanting to kind of like make a big like ornamental statements. And what's been interesting, I mean, if you can draw like a really clear parallel would be between like Swarovski crystal to um, the Bedazzler, right? It's like a really fun sense of like tacky, pragmatic and just like joyful creativity. Um, I know that one of the first examples that, that we were tracking was around the favela painting project in, in Brazil, in, in Rio, and it, we thought it was just a really interesting example of how you could apply a really um, joyful sense of, of optimism to an otherwise really pessimistic and, um, and kind of cynical environment. And so that was really one of the first ideas, and that dates back you know, several years at this point. Fabulous, it's not about like going and, and buying the most over-the-top um, you know, statement piece of, of jewelry or, or fashion, but rather kind of what your creativity can come up with as, as being the most um, authentic expression of joy and individualism.